Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the story behind creepy side-scroller horror game Noctambulant, the mysterious tale of a little girl investigating the dark secrets roaming the halls of her grandmother's house. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Renee is a little girl who lived a peaceful life with her two parents. On her birthday, Renee is gifted a one-winged doll, made by her mother. But soon after, a terrible tragedy befalls the family, and both Renee's mother and father perish. At the funeral, Renee is approached by a mysterious woman, claiming to be her grandmother, though she does not recognise her at all. As the last remaining relative to Renee, the elderly lady takes the child home where she begins to care for her. The grandma gives Renee everything she could ask for, new clothes, new toys, and a selection of new dolls, as well as her very own playroom. Six months pass, and while Renee is safe and well, things don't feel quite right. Every night, grandma sends Renee to bed early, and locks her bedroom door so she cannot leave. But why? Her grandmother also seems to have fallen ill recently, coughing and spluttering whenever she speaks. One night after the lights go out, Renee realises her door has been left unlocked. Upon leaving her room, it becomes immediately clear why Renee had been locked away at night. A killer human-sized doll known as Becky patrols the halls of Grandma's house and seems fixated on hunting down Renee and attacking her. The little girl must play a game of hide and seek around the house, evading Becky until she uncovers the truth behind her existence. Renee soon discovers a torn note dropped by her grandma outside the playroom. The note is ambiguous, describing an offering to free dolls. It calls for drops of colour to be placed in a cup on the dining room shelf, and for the big shelf in the living room to then be knocked upon. What could this mean? Upon entering her playroom, Renee discovers two books. She remembers both of these books were read to her by her late mother. The first is titled The Book of Coloured Spirits. This book describes the tale of a sorcerer who practised dark arts and black magic. Everybody in the village feared him, leading the sorcerer to live a life of solitude. In his loneliness, the sorcerer conjured up five coloured spirits – blue, yellow, red, purple, and green. However, the country's royalty feared the sorcerer's magic may take away their positions, so they sent out guards to lock him up. Hearing this news, the sorcerer worried for the safety of his spirits, and so placed them in five coloured bottles. He then disguised himself as a wine merchant and fled the village, bottles in tow. The second book is titled Book of the Free. It chronicles the misadventures of three curious girls, who one day decide to ascend a mysterious pink mountain. As they climb the mountain, a thick fog covers the path ahead. Eventually, they became lost and were consumed by the fog, encountering a pale woman with an abnormally large smile and then left hanging from the mountain trees alongside her other victims. After discovering this information, it is clear that the many wine bottles scattered throughout the house actually contain the essence of the coloured spirits created by the sorcerer. Renee must use a cup to mix the correct spirit energy together, and then place it on a shrine in the dining room. This shrine is adorned with three small dolls, which represent the bad girls from the second book. By placing the spirit cup on this shelf and then knocking on the bookshelf in the living room, a secret passage is revealed, leading down into the basement. After entering the secret passageway, Renee discovers a broken mirror. She comments how she hates mirrors, something about staring at her own reflection bothers her. This is corroborated by evidence of a broken mirror in her bedroom. After entering through a door, Renee must navigate a labyrinth of corridors guarded by a powerful spirit entity, who she must evade at every turn. Eventually, she reaches the depths of the basement and enters a workshop full of mannequins and tiny dolls. 
much like the dolls found on the dining room shrine. She proceeds to unlock a small box containing a strange paper charm and red book titled The Book of Awakening. This book has many pages missing and starts on chapter 2. It describes how the possessed reside in objects belonging to their family. Cursed to walk only by night, they are referred to as noctambulant spirits. They guard the residence of their family. Renee realises that the Becky doll who has been stalking her is possessed by a spirit of some kind, and that she must be an outsider, hence why it sees her as a threat. As most of the book is missing, Renee heads back upstairs to see if her grandma knows the location of the other pages. Upon entering the attic, Renee makes a horrifying discovery in the pages of her grandma's diary. Renee has been dead all of these years. Her mother Carrie performed a voodoo ritual using the Red Book of Awakening to bring her daughter's spirit back from the grave. It is detailed in chapter 1 of the book how she did this. Using the body of her daughter, Carrie acted as a medium, offering up her own pathway to the afterlife in return for her daughter's resurrection. To do this she needed to create an object of personal attachment for Renee's spirit to associate with, and this was the one-winged doll Renee remembers being given for her birthday. However, as detailed in the Voodoo book, those who were brought back in this manner are never the same again. Renee wasn't the little girl her parents remembered so fondly. While her body was the same, the spirit within was different. She couldn't even bear her own reflection in the mirror, feeling confused as to who she really was and lacking any key memories, not even recognising her own grandma. Renee's father grew resentful of his daughter's resurrected form, eventually denouncing her. Renee, enraged by this, and worried her mother and father may use the Book of Awakening to exorcise her soul, tore out the harmful pages and hid them within her angel doll. While this was happening, a terrible argument broke out between the mother and father in regards to their undead child. This ended with Nedrick snapping his wife's neck and then taking his own life, not wishing to live with his sin or a daughter he no longer recognised. However, because Carrie forfeit her pathway to the afterlife, she became bound to the Becky doll her own mother, the grandma, had made. A doll with a broken neck, forced to watch over her mother every night as an octambulant spirit and protector from Renee, who, due to her resurrected spirit form, was viewed as an outsider. This also explains why grandma kept Renee locked away every night out of her mother's reach. But who is Grandma, and what is her endgame? Learning that Renee is in fact the Walking Dead, her Grandma realised she should find a way to keep her safe from the Becky doll while looking for a way to safely return her to the afterlife. However, she couldn't locate the necessary pages, as Renee had hidden them. While Noctambulant doesn't give us any concrete proof in regards to the grandma's origins, we can form some conclusions based on the evidence we have. Firstly, it seems grandma is familiar with occult magic and voodoo to some extent. For starters, she isn't particularly freaked out when learning the Becky doll contains the soul of her daughter Carrie and now walks about the house by night. She also has a shrine for the three girls who became lost on the mountain path all those years ago. It is possible that Grandma may even be the sole survivor of this trio. We can also connect this old lady to the sorcerer who fled the village all those years ago. The wine bottles containing the coloured spirits are found all around Grandma's house. Not only that, we also see other spirits lingering about the place, such as this shadow in the bathroom and the guardian spirits in the basement. It seems Grandma eventually married the sorcerer after he fled the village, and he instructed her in the dark arts, the two living peacefully alongside spirits. However, one kind of magic they didn't practice was voodoo, as it was deemed sacrilegious and forbidden. They eventually gave birth to a daughter, Carrie. This explains why Carrie has some knowledge of the occult and gained access to the Book of the Awakening, allowing her to perform a ritual to bring her daughter Renee back from the dead. 
Now Grandma is trying to use her knowledge to undo the ritual, but it seems to be making her quite unwell in the process. Her illness is likely tied to the use of the paper charm, an item which can be dangerous to humans and spirits alike. Prolonged contact with it causing Grandma to fall sick. Finally, it seems as though Grandma was an expert doll maker, and this again explains why her daughter Carrie was able to fashion dolls for Rene, including the voodoo doll used to bring her back. While we know the basic story of Noctambulant, we still need one more crucial element, and that is an ending. The game offers free, and depending on the choice we make after Grandma visits Renee near the end of our adventure, dictates how this creepy fable wraps up. The endings speak for themselves, so here is a quick synopsis of each. Certain her grandma is hiding something from her, Renee decides to kill the old woman in order to stop her meddling and plotting against her. Renee believes her grandma plans to harm her, and much like her late parents, doesn't feel love towards her reborn form. In order to remedy this situation, Renee decides to enact a ritual involving the burning of the angel doll and soaking of the paper charm. By collecting up the poisoned water left behind by the charm and pouring it over her grandma as she sleeps, Renee is able to kill her. The burning of the doll also allowing her to gain control of her mother and raise the soul of her father. Both her parents now trapped inside dolls and living under Renee's control within her grandma's house forevermore. The cleansing ending is perhaps the most upbeat and happy of the bunch, as it offers Renee a way to free her mother from the confines of the doll her noctambulant spirit is bound to. To do this, Renee places the paper charm in the bathwater once again, but this time places it upon the Becky doll her mother's soul is trapped inside. This releases the spirit from within, and brings peace upon the home. Renee is accepting of her grandma in this ending and decides to trust her, and not only that, she comes to terms with her new form and no longer fears her reflection in the mirror. In the final ending, we witness Renee apply the ritual to herself. Upon retrieving the hidden third chapter torn from the Red Book, we learn that when wetting the paper charm using unclean water, it becomes volatile and dangerous to humans and spirits alike. After Renee discovers that she is no longer who she used to be, and unloved by her parents before their tragic death, she falls into a pit of despair. So Renee places the paper upon her face and then sits down where her soul returns to the afterlife, finally at peace. And with that we come to the end of another Horror Game Explained episode. I hope you found this look at Noctambulant and its twisted story both entertaining and informative. If you did then remember to leave a like, comment down below and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.